Welcome to our newest edition of NECC. See it again as tonight we take a look back at the 2019 NECC Men's Soccer Championship between top-seeded Leslie and the ultimate champions, the third-seeded Lions of Eastern Nazarene. I'm Jacob Van Ryan, the commissioner of the NECC. It's a true pleasure to be joined by the head coach of the Lions, Mr. Mark Bell, as well as three of his championship-winning student-athletes, goalkeeper Tim Eddings, midfielder Leon Zaffanetto, and defender Prem Subidi. Gentlemen, first of all, thank you for your time. It's, 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 the world is very different um, than this uh, early November championship game from a year ago, but thrilled to have you and definitely looking forward to uh, reliving what was a, a chilly, but a very fun afternoon up there at Hormel Stadium in Medford, Massachusetts. Great night, great night. Yes, as it was. So we appreciate the student athletes for being here. I will say that it, it, this is a unique situation for Eastern Nazarene. This is a team that had never won the NECC title. And just a week prior, Coach, I'm going to ask you about this. Heading into the postseason, you dropped back-to-back -back games to New England College and then to Leslie during the end of the regular season. Yeah. So you head into the tournament in the midst of a two-game skid. What was the mindset with your group as, as you begin the conference tournament? You get a victory against Dean, and then you take on ultimately those two teams who just knocked you off uh, about a couple weeks earlier. Uh, I, I think it was a great uh, timing. Um, you know, the season at that point, I think we're a 13 game winning streak, something like that. Yep. Uh, it exceeded all of our expectations, the level of play, you know, the connection, overcoming some injuries, so forth. But, um, you know, Leslie played a phenomenal game in regular season. They're organized, they're together, they, you know, the field was loud with them communicating, you know, it really all the credit goes to them. And, and that's pretty much how we knew they would play. They're a very organized team, you know, not having won a championship before uh, put us in a spot to say, do you want to win this? You know, our, our, what kind of team are we going to be? I think our theme for the season was uh, live a great story. Um, <laughs> that's just something that, stuck with me uh, over the last couple of years, you know, the diversity of the team, where these guys are from, and not just their countries, but, you know, where are they from as far as school goes? I, I, top of my head, I can't think of anybody who had actually won a championship uh, that was on that roster. And that's pretty unique in and of itself. So this was really, the two games was tough but it was probably the best thing for us in terms of uh, getting us focused and in shape for what we wanted to do, which was ultimately live a great story. So I love that message. All right, let's get into the action here again. Hormel Stadium, it's a Sunday evening. You can see the night setting up there in Medford, Massachusetts. A, a facility Leslie hosted there. Um, un, unfortunately, they, they, they're, they do not have an on-campus facility due to the location of their campus, but a really nice, big, spacious facility up there in Medford, Massachusetts. And if we can get into the game action, it was a Sunday night, um, and, and it, was, it, was, it was a good one to watch as we got underway. Earlier that day, um, just a, a side note, the women's volleyball team at Eastern Nazarene had won an NECC title as well. And uh, as the student athletes, as we get this one underway, you see Eastern Nazarene in the red uniforms, Leslie, by virtue of their top seed, they're in the whites. Um, Tim, I'll ask you as, as the keeper, as sort of that back line, that leader back there, what's going through your mind as you get underway, and, you know, basically planning your first ever championship game? Well, I mean, this whole, this whole playoff run, um, I never played in, uh, soccer wise, I'd never played in a playoff situation. Uh, my high school was really bad. And um, <laughs> so coming into this, it was a unique situation with, uh, with Tyler being hurt. Um, it kind of was all on me with our backups also being hurt. So it was really just down to me. So like that mindset was, well, I've got to do my job so that I don't let anybody else down. Cause I don't want to be the reason that this, doesn't happen for everybody else that's worked so hard um, for this opportunity. Interesting point you bring up. Um, Prem, I'll ask you, obviously, as, as this thing's getting underway, you see the, the play being sort of between the 20s there on the, on the surface, sort of midfield. You're sorting out one another. First five or 10 minutes of this game, you actually get some really good opportunities here coming up shortly. Had to feel good to, to, to assert yourself early on in this game for your side. 
Uh, first of all, like, I'm really thankful for those great coaches that they taught me how to, like, work on with the teammates. And Leon, we know Leon, what he can do. And and it's just uh, the movement. We all did it together as a team. That was bringing me, like, more, like, confidence in the team. So I was able to do I, I love that thought, and it's it's a really good sentiment. Um, you know, early on, jitters, we know, first five or ten minutes in, 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 in collegiate soccer, you're sort of feeling one another out. Coach, what was the message to your group? You talked about sort of living that story, but what was the message in terms of a, a game plan attack of, of how, you wanted to, how, how you wanted to create some chances against a very good Leslie team? Well, I think, you know, when you talk about the the stadium, it really helped us. Uh, Leslie's a uh, home field is much smaller. Um, it really played to their advantage. They, again, are very organized. The bigger field helped us, no question. Um, you know, we, we have stressed, you know, all along, we're going to play a certain way and, and, you know, 300 passes. And, you know, we're trying to keep the ball as much as we possibly can with purpose. So the bigger field allowed us to, to sort of do that, play the way that we want to play. And then also you can sort of see Leon's in the middle right now. And, and uh, in the first game against Leslie, he was on the outside. I think he touched the ball maybe five, six times. You know, we just couldn't, you know, get what we wanted out of our offense. So this was a, a good adjustment for us and, you know, a chance for other players. To Prem's credit, we pushed him on the outside. Um, you know, and we had had this conversation about, you know, his sacrifice, typically he's in the middle, was going to lead to something special and great. And he just had to buy into it. And, and that was really, um, you know, exciting to see him put that second goal in. Um, and same with Leon, uh, you know, to be able to play where the team needed him to play, that was that was a big part of things. So, uh you, again, as exciting as it is, it's just guys, we're going to have to play the way that we want to play. Um, this field was just like veterans. So we were, we felt like we were at home when it came to that. So that, that really helped us. And I think that helped settle things a little bit. And, and, you know, as much possession as it looks like we have in the first 20 minutes or so, Leslie just organized, you know, that they, they weren't, they, cut the field off and make it smaller. They do a great job with that. And that's a little deceiving in the sense that, it, you know, maybe it, we had some momentum, but the reality, it didn't come until the first goal, I don't think. So um, they were right on what they wanted to do as well. So you see an ACC player of the year, Charlie Swan, they're working in the middle. He and Leon forming a really dangerous, potent combination that we're going to see a lot from. Um, Tim, a few minutes ago, you got your first touch on it. As, as a netminder, it's it's nice to get a feel early on and not have it be too difficult a chance just so you get your sort of your, your bearings and your wits about you. Just comment on that from a keeper's perspective, if you don't mind. Yeah, that the first shot's always the most nerve-wracking because you still have those, those uh, the jitters in your stomach. So, like, you just want to get that first touch and you're like, okay, I know how to do this. I know this is my, like, this is what I do. Just, you got to get that first touch and it, it changes the whole mindset of, it calms you down and everything. So, I've, I've spoken, uh, spoken to a lot of keepers over the year. They say that if they get a good touch in that first one, have a nice, calm, sort of cool, collected save, they play better for the entire mm -hmm. 90 minutes or even beyond. Yeah, I so did wobble that first one a little bit, but I, I got it under control after that. <laughs> it's interesting that, 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 that Coach Bell talked about, um, you know, this, 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 this um, configuration uh, of Hormel Stadium, similar to Veteran Stadium, where, where Eastern Nazarene plays all their home games. Definitely a big, spacious area. Definitely allows some of those skilled players up front, Leon and Charlie and the like, to get a little bit more space than some of the, the smaller configuration fields we see. And you're starting to see Eastern Nazarene put some pressure here on Leslie as they push forward. Leon, we're going to get to you in a second here as you create some magic pretty early on here. But walk us through what you're thinking about here in, in, in the first 10 or 15 minutes of the game. Leon, you feeling good about what's going on up front? Yes, definitely. Uh, that's always like we are – what we are looking for in our in our games, uh, that definitely makes us more confident because when we keep the ball in our attack field, means like we're doing like not better, but uh, 
you know, we don't have any pressure on us and we can just do what we, we do, like play soccer. And that's what we're looking for there. So I think like, even like you said before I mentioned, Prem creates a lot of changes over there and that doesn't motivate only Prem, but does motivate the entire team. Because like we are family, we know each other very well. And so if one of us is having a good eye, that means all of us will have a good eye. So that's very important for the team. And when we start the, the game like that, we just feel like, okay, you know, that's what we do. Just just let's keep doing. And that's in true. our our uh, last game against Leslie, we didn't create that many opportunities in the beginning of the game. And when we had chances, we failed. And, uh, so maybe that's why it was very important, like these chances right now. It's, it's such an interesting concept. I'm Brad, glad you brought it up as you see the ball sort of volleyed into the middle here. And there's the opportunity and there's the goal. Leon gets the tally to start off the championship. And, you know, Leon, you said it. First of all, congratulations. A great set piece there. Cross over to the middle and you buried in the left side of the net. Really well executed play there. But you talked about, I think, an interesting point that I want to follow up on is, is that momentum. And that when one or two guys are going good, all of a sudden it's like, I got to raise my level and I got to match the level of my teammates that's an interesting thing because I don't think people think about that you know from a game like soccer where obviously there's 11 players on the field but when one or two guys are going good I thought you got great passing up the middle a great possession over the first 10 minutes especially as a lower seeded team I know you know what we're talking about here obviously anybody can beat anybody but you guys really confident in in, in terms of really sharing the ball well and, and and doing a lot of good things just comment on that if you don't mind because I think that's an interesting point yeah I think it always starts in practice every every day Coach always asked for us for that, for the captains especially, to show, you know, show effort. Everything that we do, we have to do with a reason, and that's what we try to do. You know, so when we, even when we do that in practice, like we show the other players, okay, everybody's practicing hard, so we needed to practice harder, because that's that's a competition that we're looking for inside of our own team, but in a good way. So everybody needs to play better every day, you know, and that happens during the game too. Because when you start the game and you see everybody like going hard, everybody wants to win a 50-50 ball that motivate everybody else. Like I said, we just believe in each other. So we know like if someone fail, it's another play being behind us to cover it up. And we just believe on that. And that's exactly what happened over there in the first goal. It was a cross. The ball was not for me first, but I knew like it would be a chance of just like, you know, going through and maybe would like ended up for me in the back and that's what happened and I was free to just finish in the corner and that's how we got that opportunity. Hey coach, I, I gotta ask you, you get that first goal just uh you know 12 minutes into the into the first half of action. Obviously you, you had such a great run. You knocked off Dean in the first round two nothing. Then you were dominant up in New England College, six to one in the semifinals. You had to feel like the train was just rolling at this point as you could get the first goal to start off this match. Yeah, I felt like um we're doing what we want to do well. Um, you know, Ed Centio, one of our cast senior captains, uh, he stepped in, and Ed's played every position the two years that he's been with us, but he stepped in the back. Uh, he sacrificed, you know, to be back there, did a tremendous job, Carlos and Didac and, you know, Jake, um, everybody was good. You know, they, they weren't, hey this is there's all this pressure and we just played the way we wanted to play it was really a fun game to watch in terms of us doing what we wanted to do and could we beat Leslie at their best and that was um you know to get that first goal obviously uh is huge momentum um the pressure's on them to come out a little bit more pressure's on sure. them to to get it into their our uh, defending uh, half a little bit more and we just kept going you know we just we got more confidence and things were going well and again you 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 have bad games where you know we were really stressed in that Leslie and NEC games in the regular season and now you can just see them you know they're just moving the ball around not you know nothing's forced nothing's you know uh you know, oh, we got to do this right away. It was, it was, it was a great game to watch in terms of guys playing their roles. Um, didn't have to do anything spectacular. They just had to play the way that we we've, we've really been trying to get them to play all season. So, 
I'm uh, I'm glad you brought up Edison Zane because he was such a such a terrific force throughout this entire tournament. I thought he was really steady uh, throughout, and I always remember some of his post game celebrations. I, there was a lot of happy faces, but I think his was right up there uh, amongst all of them. Hey Prem, let's go, let's go to you here. Is 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 you're working on uh, on that side? Um, you're, you're one of the orchestrators. Coach talked about you're sacrificing a little bit, but at the same time, you're, you're, you're making some things happen. We're going to see you shortly, but give me a, a mindset. You're feeling pretty good after the way this game is going. I mean, as we're watching the first 15, 20 minutes of action here, this is like a, a, a clinic you guys are putting on, just a ton of possession down there on the Leslie side of the field. Yeah, um, w when I was playing on that spot, like, it's been, like, wild. Like, I have been, like, going on the site and, like, crossing and dribble, uh, to my teammates, but like every every time I every time I see like everybody doing their part, and I feel like yes, that's what I need to fit in the part and like and make it work happen. So like that's 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 that gives me more confidence to like do such a like great things out and there. Just to just follow up, if you don't mind, with what Coach talked about, you sacrificing for the betterment of the team. You know, sort of playing a different area, playing a different role. Obviously, knew you were still a key component. Uh, but just talk about that that mindset of the, the, you know, allowing yourself to say, hey, I need to do this for us to be successful and win a title. Yeah, um, like, I, first, like, I wanted to, like, I never wanted to transfer. Like, I never wanted to play soccer after I played soccer, like, two years. And I wanted to, like, coach here in, in, in our hometown. So, like, I was thinking, like, oh, you know what? I'm still young. Like, I need to go out there do something and and I never went out of my house like never went out of the town and and stay in Boston like I transfer in ENC I felt like so nervous first year so tough year because like all my parents were like why did you go why did you leave and that's that's the reason like pushed me so hard to like I'm here to do my business that's what I love like I sacrifice a lot for the soccer and it just a, uh, and I really at the end it's worth it. After winning the championship, it's worth it. Like sacrifice the family, the I, I had like old people. My parents are old, like so I got it. I know I was supposed to take care of them, but I still went out there like and chase my goals, and it, it was worth it at the end of the day. That's that's a, that's an awesome statement. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. And and, and coach, what does that mean? I mean, you you've created a culture there. Um, you know, I've been there for five years now and, you know, hearing Prem say something like that about what that means and, you know, just coming together as a family, because that's truly what you've created, the culture there at, at Eastern Nazarene. Yeah, I, you know, that's always the goal. <laughs> you know, <laughs> 2017, you know, we had a, a nice bunch of guys, but just not good soccer players. And then, you know, Prem and Ed and you know, the four seniors, Sunil and, and Jake and Noah, and it, you know, they just all sacrificed. Um, you know, we don't have a facility on campus, you know, we're a small campus and, and coach Freddie is the best recruiter in the world. No, none of this would have happened without our coach Freddie. And, and one of the things that we talk about all the time is, all right, what is going to bring better you know, players here. And it is the experience. Uh, winning obviously makes that a lot easier, but at the same time, you want to be part of something that's unique, that's challenging. Uh, and this group put it all together. And then again, that we can draw up all the X's and O's, but they executed it on the field. They were, you know, great leaders, you know, everybody, I think, on this team sacrificed in a lot of different ways. Um, it was it was a, not an easy uh, challenge, but by all means, it was one of the best for me as a coach. So that's, I hear you. Yeah, that's our goal. But <laughs> not have the right people. And that's that's where I really feel like this year. That was it. That was the case. You see a penalty kick was called there and, and, and here's the opportunity taken. Um, ultimately, you'll, you'll see what takes place. It, it bounces off, and then Prem's in the right spot at the right time. Prem, talk about that. After Charlie takes it, you're thinking he's going to bury it, but you have the presence of mind to not give up on the play. They go, you can see some of the Leslie players there with their, their arms skyward saying, hey, it went off the, 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 the post there, and nobody's here to clean it up. But Prem, 
a great presence of mind there to not give up on the play. Yeah, it was uh, it was the right time and like it was the right moment for me. And I know we need really needed the second goal and and I had a faith on my teammates. So I know Charlie was a great. He's a he's a some type of player. He's a good finisher. And I was thinking like, oh, that's the easy easy goal. And <laughs> that I was thinking and I was like, as soon as I I see Charlie like the Charlie the goalie saved the Charlies shot I was like oh I gotta get there and I I, I tapped it and I came back right to my feet and and I hit the second goal and that was the right moment for me and I I was able to bring my team up An unbelievable moment there for you to get that 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 tally your first of the year in, in that situation give your team a two nothing lead Hey, uh, Tim, I haven't forgotten about you, my friend. We just haven't had to talk about you too much. It's got to feel pretty good back there when you're seeing all, all the play about uh, about 80 yards away from your net. Yeah, it's it's a good feeling. It's uh, It gets boring back there sometimes, but I would rather be bored and win games than have all this action and not do as well. Um, it's definitely a good feeling to not have a lot of pressure on on you at all times. Coach, I'm curious to ask you ask you about this. You get the two goal lead. A lot of soccer coaches will tell you that two goal advantage is, is the most dangerous in soccer because you sort of rest on your laurels a little bit because you say, all right, I got a little wiggle room to work with. Um, I'm curious to get your thoughts on that. It's sort of human nature to be able to like, all right, I can sort of relax a little bit in this heightened situation of a championship game. You have that two nothing advantage. Now we're basically midway through the first half of play. But man, when you watch this, when you look at this action, it's it's really like a feel is tilted. You guys are just dominating play. Yeah, I think again, I, I think some of the advantage of being a team who's scored a lot of goals this season. Um, you know, I, I I know we had some things figured out, you know, and and um, uh, we're gonna just keep creating opportunities, creating opportunities. Nice yep. save there, Tim. Yep. Uh, um, and, and that was really the confidence. Um, we didn't change the way we played. We didn't sit back. We didn't, you know, we, we knew we had team goals that we had to achieve uh, regardless of the score. Um, you know, Leslie sort of forced us to change in our, our first meeting, forced us to change a little bit, and we didn't respond real well. So this was really of who's going to, Who's going to change us in terms of playing the way we want to play? We want to play a certain way. We're going to continue to play that way. And, you know, that's where I think guys got their confidence. They, they kept playing this way. They, uh, uh, again, it was something that, you know, two years was in the making. And, and uh, you know, I'm really proud of, of the way they played. Um, I was just going to say, when, I, when Leon scored his goal, Goosebumps. I mean, I, yeah. one of my all-time favorite goals. When Prem scored his goal, <laughs> I, I, you know, inside of me, that was one of the greatest moments for me as a coach. Um, I knew he was going to do something good. You know, something for his sacrifice, I just knew it was going to be worth it for him. And and that's something you take with you, you know, all time. Uh, and, so and, that, and what? what sorry. Good. No, sorry to cut you up there, but what, what a beautiful sentiment there. You talk about student athletes, you know, um, they, they work so hard and, and you give up so much, you sacrifice so much. It's not your common student experience on campus. You as a coach, you talk about your assistant coach and, and all those long hours when you have those moments that just are like, man, this is why I do it, right? This, these are the hours. This is why I spend all those hours watching film or working with my guys or crafting a practice plan, all the stuff that people don't see. Everybody sees the, the games on the Wednesdays or Saturdays and Sundays or whatnot, but it's all those other hours and it's moments like that. I, I love that you hit on that, that sentiment. Yeah, for sure. That's, uh, um, it was a special, it was a special season. Again, uh, you know, I don't think we started thinking about things until, you know, we went to the, RPI game and nationals all of a sudden now it's you know <laughs> there's pressure and and you know we I, I honestly don't think I felt that going into the final not to to sure. take away from Leslie or any opponent we were playing it's just that I knew right now we were at, at a great state in terms of our confidence um, 
nervous. I didn't get the sense that anybody was nervous. And, and uh, you know, you have a, uh, the women's volleyball team showing up to come out and support us. It's, it's that mentality that, again, I think uh, played into not just us winning, but us uh, where our confidence was and what we were doing and how we're doing it. So I, I'm glad you brought that up because I think we've reached halftime here and it, it is in fact two nothing Eastern Nazarene as we head into the start of the second half. Earlier that morning, literally on campus, your women's volleyball team wins the NECC title. And, yeah. and it was, it was, I, I I'll say this. I, we talked about this with, with Derek Schmidt, the head coach of the women's volleyball team on our first edition of see it again and, and those student athletes and what it meant to them. But there was a lot of your guys who were getting ready to take the bus or peeking their head in, getting ready to go. And, 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 and at the end of this, when the women's volleyball team shows up with the shirts and with the trophy and, and, and the excitement, it was such an unbelievable experience. And, yeah. and it's, it's, it, it, it spoke to the, the community and, and the support that, that you've built within that athletic department. And I'll ask the student athletes in a second, but coach, just being a part of that and, and, and being a part of that culture, it, it's gotta be really rewarding. Well, you know, the, when I took the ENC job, you know, I really loved Brad's vision, Dr. Zargis's vision for athletics, um, knowing that ENC doesn't have a history of winning much uh, certainly not winning championships. Um, and it's his culture. It's what he created. It's what the other coaches are like. It's, you know, the support between the athletes because they're the same thing. Softball, tremendous program, uh, coach Danny had and men's and women's basketball and, uh, baseball and soft, you know, it's just, they all are in the same boat when it comes to, you know, sacrificing in, in many ways, this is not an easy you know, experience. Um, and some ways it's tough to recruit, but yep. what's the best recruit? The best recruit is somebody that's going to fit your team and, and uh, continue to develop what we're, you know, trying to develop. Um, but this was, again, uh, 11 different countries represented, um, you know, stories. Some of these guys you know, Prem and Sunil, their journey to get to the States is difficult. Um, it's just an amazing group, you know, and I think once in a lifetime group, it's not uh, uh, common. I know, you know, some programs are upset that I have a lot of international kids. I'm <laughs> like, well, come meet them. You know, the, the, they're amazing guys. Um, so I think you find that a lot on ENC. I think that 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 experience is common um and again i'm incredibly grateful for you know rob rossi who is a soccer alum what a great support he's been uh dr zardis tony katie uh, and you know the whole it's a it's a it's a great environment it's a great uh culture that's that's created here um <laughs> Uh, I think Jose was a little upset at this point that uh, uh, Charlie was going to come up for the goal. But to be honest, again, we did what we did. You know, we've, we've done that all year. So uh, you put you put good pressure there, amount of charge. And here's another opportunity to get your second penalty kick chance of the game. And this time, Charlie, uh, yeah. not to ruin the suspense, but Charlie's going to bury this one. Yeah. Um, Tim, Tim, I want to go to you because I know that you, you know, your family is close to that program and, and, and talk about, you know, that, that culture that coach just touched on um, and, and, and what it means, obviously, earlier as you see Charlie find it in the net. Um, you know, uh, talk to me about what that means and watching the women's volleyball team earlier in the day and you're like, man, they held up their end of the bargain. We got to get the job done and bring home a title as well. Yeah, I mean... That's, it's such a cool like atmosphere that we all have here as an athletics. I'd say we're an athletics family because everyone is at all the games. Like athletes cheer each other on. That's just what they do here. Like we all know each other's names. We all are each other's number one fans at the games. Like you, like you'll see here at the end, like all the, like you said, the women's volleyball team, when they came in, like you're saying goosebumps for those things. Like that gave me goosebumps. Like, Hey, they did that it's our turn. Like it's our turn to do that. And we get to hold the trophy and we get that, that cool experience as a team to finally be on top after working so hard. And like you said, the family thing, um, 
yeah, my family is really close to the um, the school. My brother played here um, back in when they were still in the CCC. So competition was a little bit different, but it still is still is a that same family aspect. Um, everyone playing together to be um, a unit. Um, Leon, I, I want to go to you as, as, as you're sensing and taking it all in. You and Charlie become close. You played together at uh, Massasoit Community College. You came to Eastern Nazarene together. What's it mean to, to win an, a championship with this group of your brothers and, 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 and just what, what Coach has talked about with this family culture that you've all been a part of? Yeah. So Charlie and I, we, we played two years in Massasoit together. We both won both years the conference there. Uh, and we just came with our mind saying like, okay, we need to do that, that again, you know, like, you know, we have one more year here, maybe like two more together. And we definitely need to keep doing the same thing. Both of my years at uh, Massasoit, I score almost the same amount as assist. So it was always like around 10 and 10 or 11 and nine. These past years was 11 and nine assists. So it's always close. That's like how we can see how we think of for the team, you know, it's not only for ourselves. And I love doing that. It, the feeling is amazing, you know, like by the end when you just look back and you can see everything that you did with your teammates and sprees. And definitely what helped us a lot was the women's uh, volleyball team. Because in the locker room, when we're going to the game, we're watching on our phone the game. And we're <laughs> having like that feeling when it, we see their winning. It's just like the same time feels very good, makes us very nervous, you know. And then when they come into the stadium with the trophy and just yelling like, we won, we won. And we see all these other students that were in the game coming support us. We just feel like hug for our family, you know, because that's what ENC it is. It's like all together. And that felt really good. We didn't imagine it like they would celebrate there with us. And that's what they choose. Like, that's the meaning, you know. So sometimes you only feel like, oh, the soccer players are like this and that. But I feel it's like just the atmosphere at school is like that, you know. We just cheer for each other, like Tim mentioned it before. And it's great. It's awesome for you. Hey, hey, Prem, I'll go to you now before I let Coach put the, uh, put the finishing touches on this one. Obviously, the celebration is on uh, up there at Hormel Stadium. What's Prem? You talked about sort of overcoming some hardships and 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 really growing as a person. To see it all end with this trophy and hugs and and the celebration, gosh, it feels like a lifetime ago we were all able to be out there and celebrating and hugging one and, and and enjoying a title. Um, but Prem, what's 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 uh, what's going through your mind after after watching and being a part of this scene? Oh, um, it was the best moment for me. Like in, in my life, is that's the best moment that I ever like involved in under such a. We have a great story, people from like different country, different background and playing it together, chemistry wise in the in the field, outside the field. It was a great, I really, I really enjoyed it. And like, like I say, Leon said, like during the halftime, the bench players was watching in the, the volleyball, the winning it. So I was thinking like the environment, the environment was so, so high, I was like, we need to do this, guys. I was thinking like so, like so. The girls won the championship already, so it, this is our time to go. And I was, I was putting my mindset. Up. I was like, oh, we gotta do this. We gotta do this. And I never lose the focus. And all the team, like all the players, were like so has the same mindset. So it was, it was a great opportunity for me to uh, on that on that moment. So. That's awesome. Coach, I, I'm going to send it to you to, to, to wrap this one up. Um, you, you took this job. This is, this is the end of your fifth year. Um, and, and you turned over a program you talked about. You know, you're building a culture, you're building a family, building a program that hadn't had a ton of success. And, and you see it with these, these moments. Um, I, I always remember, you know, you and, and, and Freddie on the sideline just sort of looking at each other and, and letting the moment sort of sink in that, like, yes, it's actually going to happen. And, and when you've never climbed to the top of the mountain, it sort of hits you that like we're here now. I I, I got I, I want to know what that what that moment's like and and watching the culmination of 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 this effort in this group that you've you know talked so glowingly about and with good reason and and watching them win a title and celebrate out on the field. Well, I, I gotta say again, I, I've really been fortunate to have um, you know be part of good coaching teams and and that's really what it is. Coach Freddie is the man. You know, he, he really, um, 
he's been a great friend and, you know, sacrificed, he sacrificed a lot and, and, uh, you know, he worked his tail off, you know, he doesn't make one phone call, you know, these guys aren't here and, you know, he's really huge blessing for me in my life. Um, you know, these are a group of guys, uh, you know, we've gone to Zambia and we've, you know, been part of, uh, doing some things, uh, you know, for communities over there, we've done stuff with Dana Farber. Um, you know, this is a group of guys that isn't just a bunch of soccer players. They, they all have contributed to making ENC a better place. And I think that's something I'm really proud of. Um, you know, the moment the whistle blew, coach Freddie and I gave each other a big hug. That was a special moment, huge moment for me. It really meant a lot. Oh, and 16, which I, I've never been part of a program that, you know, I, I took some, that was a gut check for sure about, you know, me as a coach and what I wanted and so forth and so on. So this was a very, very, very special moment. And, you know, in spite of the things that have happened recently, it's, it's made me realize that I, I appreciate this even more now because of what we did. And, you know, I'm looking forward to being on the field again, but um, this was a special one for sure. And if, if I could just say one more thing, you have done a tremendous job. <laughs> I appreciate you as a, as a leader of our conference and, you know, the joy that you share with these guys. It, it means the world to them to have uh, somebody like yourself embrace them and greet them and uh, you know, congratulate them. You, you have done a tremendous job here and, and uh, you, I know you don't have an easy job. So uh, uh, I really appreciate all the stuff that you guys have done for us. It's, it's, it's very meaningful. So it's uh, that, thank you, coach. I mean, it means a lot, but when you have people like you do in, on your roster and in that, in that building and in that, on that school, it's, it's, it's very easy. And this is the best part of my job and then watching this stuff and, and getting to talk to these guys and, you know, watching these moments, right. And that's why we do what we do. And, and, and yeah. terrific. Thanks gentlemen. Congratulations. Once again, um, really special day. And, and I thank you for your time and, and for being a part of this, obviously, as coach said, the world is very different, but this is our, 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 our lasting memory for the time being until we get back out there and it can't come soon enough. Uh, continue to stay safe. And we look forward to watching your group play again. Obviously, Coach, it'll be with different faces, uh, but it can't come soon enough. And, guys, congratulations. Have a great holiday season. And we look Thank forward you. to watching you again this season. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one, guys. Yep. Be well. Thank you, guys.